这个脚，这个篱笆，要把它补上，缺了一脚。
day, we fight to preserve magnificent places and wildlife. We are Earth Justice, a national organization for your right to clean energy. We are Earth Justice, 135 plus lawyers representing clients free of charge. Every day, we fight to combat climate change. We're Earth Justice, and we're here because, now more than ever, the Earth needs a good lawyer. Earth Justice uses the power of law to ensure our planet and its inhabitants have a future. No one fights more cases on the environment than Earth Justice. And we win almost every time, because when we win, the air and water are cleaner, food systems are safer, and public lands are preserved. And we win because these are fights we cannot lose. Want to join us in this fight? The time is now. Go to earthjustice.org today. That's earthjustice.org. <clears throat> so, uh, so, uh, hey, it's, uh, Bowerly live at four minutes after six on News Radio 930 WBEN. We, um, are supposed to be carrying a program on mental illness and uh, with a focus on suicide and being aware of all of the stressors through which people are going at this point in time. And just to add on to the stressors that people are going through this point in time, there seems to be a network-wide issue bringing you the program, which is going to feature a number of entertainment luminaries. John Bon Jovi, believe me, I, I wish I was, but I'm not. until we can bring you the network program. When I signed off the air and I told Phil that he had earned his uh, submarine sandwich that we got from the grocery store, uh, I uh, left a full board of phone calls. People who wanted to talk about how they're dealing with COVID depression. So... Oh, there's Joe Beamer. He's Joe Beamer in the house. Joe Beamer might actually come in early to talk about uh, mental health and dealing with uh, depression. You know, while Joe is getting organized and while Phil drinks heavily, um, let me just repeat something that I mentioned in the... She's a friend of my very good friend. Uh, actually, she's the wife. Hello. Also a friend. Uh, she's the wife of uh, the guitar player from Flipside, John LaJoy. Her name is uh, Paula LaJoy. And Paula is uh, what you would call a life coach. She's gone through all of the certification and all of the training, and she helps people basically get their you-know-what together. So I was talking with Paula LaJoy, and we were discussing how to... Uh, Suicide is inevitable in any way. And I, 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 I love the fact that 
this point of the police struggling inside. Boy, that key word perfect. And, and Brene Brown's bra braving, uh, I should say, daring guy. Bra uh, well, she's got a great book with daring. So daring greatly. But she talks about perfection being such a trap. And the worst thing you could do for yourself is to try to be perfect. And so really, a perfect life, I mean, nobody really wants that. Because that's not good for the money you never have. Yeah, I mean, I just love that you said that because I'm sitting here thinking I'm the therapist and all those people whose lives look perfect, you're right. They are not perfect. So, yes, it is true. And, and uh, thanks for pointing that out. I think just making sure to be consistent about what you're doing and know that some, for some of us, including myself, there's just going to be hard times at times. And for me, knowing that can make it a little bit more tolerable that instead of it being the end of the world, that uh, we can move forward. Thanks again. Send us a message saying, I attempted suicide four years ago. I still struggle most days. I was in graduate school and trying to get my PhD, which I know I'm qualified for. Anxiety and depression issues made it harder to be as productive and lead to fellow grad students, and that led to fellow grad students harassing me. One co-worker tried to tell me different ways to kill myself and posted on a public site the details of my attempt. Oh, no. Uh, I had to leave the program without the degree. Medicine and meditation help a lot. I just wish it was treated like any other illness. And boy, there's shame right there. You know, there, how can you not feel shame, which is also another big enemy of mental health? Yeah, graduate programs, I mean, they're a special kind of animal. And the folks that go through them, you know, I'm one of those. Uh, we, um, we, you know, we have pretty high standards and we're not always forgiving, especially as I said. So, yeah, thanks for writing in. Yeah, man. Gosh, if we could just be more empathetic and loving of anybody going through a tough time it would be so helpful our next guest sadly is no stranger to loss and the spotlight her father the late chris cornell was lost to suicide in 2017 and is the driving inspiration for why the i'm listening program and initiative started and continues today Lily Cornell Silver started her own interview series, Mind Wide Open, on Instagram TV earlier this year. She is an outstanding supporter and mental health advocate, and we've seen that up with Ryan Castle from 99.9 KISW in Seattle, and they talked about how much everyone is struggling mentally through COVID-19 and the social equity and justice movement. If anything, like this process has shown me how much solidarity there is, that everybody's struggling right now, to an extent, you know, and I think that's what... At the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was in so much shock and in kind of survival mode. I was like, how are we going to get through this? Like, where am I going to get toilet paper? Like, you know what I mean? And, and now people have ha kind of had the time to be like, wow, <clears throat> this is how I'm feeling about it, you know, and kind of have had that minute to breathe and be like, this is, this is a lot. <clears throat> and no wonder I, I feel bad because we're going through a global trauma you know we're all experiencing trauma right now and so that's been um, you know, the thing that I'm, solidarity with the I'm really struggling too and, and the pandemic is is you know making it harder in these ways and and you know the structural supremacy is making it harder in these ways and and uh so that opening that conversation has been not only helpful to others but immensely helpful <laughs> Social media is inherently just bad for people's mental health. I mean, I know that we use it as a tool for, for good at times, but, I mean, right. is, is it just bad for people? I don't know. I mean, it's hard because, like, I come from, a, you know, kind of the first generation where, like, we grew up with it, you know? Like, I had an Instagram at 13. Like, I don't really know what my mental health would be like if I didn't have social media. I definitely know they're, they can be easily abused. I think the thing about social media that can be super detrimental is the constant overstimulation, constant overstimulation. You can't escape it. Um, but that's not even just social media. That's kind of just a society that's in our own news cycle. So I think honestly, it's like the best thing. Ni ba. 缺了个口，所以把那个的那个缺口给补上。那做做做好了这个一个窗口。It was my favorite class. I ended up getting an A plus in that class. Trying to say something. And you know, growing up in my house, my dad loved jazz, but my mom did not like it. So it wasn't played very often. Just when she was out of the house, he would sneak it on. So that whole realm wasn't really opened up to me until I arrived in Boston. 
and um, I'm going to be playing for you Dizzy Gillespie's A Night in Tunisia, and I actually got to see him play live in Boston while I was there, which was just amazing. A Night in Tunisia even connects to the Clifford Crawley stories that you may have heard us talk about earlier in the show. Cliff arranged this piece for us to play as a duo, too, and did so at the... That was Mahler's Adagietto from Symphony No. 5, performed by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra with Leonard Bernstein conducting. I'm Nancy Dawn. And I'm Timothy Steves. And, and this, this is um, our music. A couple years after we started playing together, we founded a chamber music festival called the Tuckamore Festival. And one of my duties there was to coach and to teach. And so I started to coach chamber music experience. Um, Kind of quartets and quintets and trios and then later on i was actually invited to coach chamber music at uh, domaine forge in the summer in quebec and there i had the the pleasure really to start coaching string quartets which was a real wonderful experience especially for a pianist because as a pianist you're always trying to think of a way to play that 
isn't the piano. No one ever says to you, just play it like a piano. They always say, play it like a French horn, or play it like an oboe, or sing like a tenor, or draw your line out like a viola, or a cello, or a violin, or use more vibrato, or whatever. You can't just be a pianist. You always have to be something else. Well, coaching strings was a challenge for me. I think it'd be a challenge for all pianists, but of course I had Nancy to rely on and I was always asking questions and how she did this and how she did that. And I think I've gotten pretty adequate with it and I love coaching string quartets. A piece that I've had the pleasure of coaching several times is the Quartet Sets by Franz Schubert, which is just a beautiful piece of music. I think it rivals Mon Carl Souvre Tavois is perhaps one of the greatest love songs of all time, and my favorite recording is the Amadeus Quartet with Robert Brainin on first violin. He just, he just sings. So this is Schubert's Quartet Sets in C minor with the Amadeus String Quartet.
number of coronavirus infections in Canada shows no sign of abating. Quebec is reporting 698 cases today, Ontario 435. With the national total of more than 151,000 cases since the pandemic. <laughs> Okay. Jenny, you're hot.